Great little lies that are being spread around by the uh, mainstream media, by Washington, by uh, a lot of sources. We're, we're being told a lot of sweet little lies like the deficit doesn't matter. Um, family isn't really all that important. There really doesn't need to be a dad in the home. Um, gay marriage is equivalent to heterosexual marriage. It's the same thing. It's the same institution. Uh, we get a lot of this stuff. A lot of sweet little lies that tell us uh, our, our credit is endless, that uh, our money pit is bottomless, and we can just spend as much as we want, live any way that we want. There are no rules. All of those are sweet little lies. Folks, we have a day of reckoning coming. And the, welcome back to Faith and Freedom. I'm your host, Lee Miller, joined as always in studio by my lovely wife, Patty. And we have our guest on the phone, the purveyor of Black Quill and Ink, Milton Reed. Milton, how you doing this afternoon, buddy? I'm doing well, Lee and Patty. How are you all? We're doing great. Thank doing you for fantastic. being on the show. Yes, thank you. I've been my looking pleasure. forward to this. Yeah, I really appreciate Patty kind of turned me on to you. Um, she had subscribed to your site. She's always going out and looking at these conservative, different conservative blog sites. And uh, she found yours, and she said, you got to check this guy out. He's pretty cool. So I went and uh, <laughs> took a look at your site, and sure enough, she was right. You're pretty cool. Yeah. I like anyone who just speaks the truth. Well, I appreciate that, Patty. We try. We try hard to. Yeah. There really is no other thing that should be done, quite honestly. Right, and you have to be, you've got to be bold these days to tell the truth because it's not very popular. It's not, and one of the, uh, you played the uh, song Lies, and uh, regrettably there are quite a bit of lies that are also going on in the black community, and that's part at least as to uh, how Black Quill and Ink came about. Uh, as an African American, I, had a, I have a very deep concern about the direction of the black community, uh, and my uh, beautiful daughter, Brooke, and her wonderful husband, Chris, who both live in Dallas, uh, provided me with Black Quill and Ink as a birthday gift. And oh, wow. With that, I decided that this would be my voice. And with God's help, I would try to get the message out to the black community, the message about conservatism. Wow. Well, you, you have the greatest helper in the world right there. Well, I, I, God is I, the way I, to go. That's the, boy, you are on our message right out of the gate. We're, we are faith and freedom, and it's, you know, we talk about how you, you, uh, you really need to live your faith. If you don't, there's a big attack going on right now, um, we talked about in the last hour, where you have the, the bedrock of conventional wisdom, of godly wisdom, that has been the glue that's held society together for a very, very long time, thousands of years, and what you always had throughout the centuries were young people who were progressive thinkers, and they always, young people always think when they hit that rebellious age, oh, mom and dad don't know what they're talking about, and they rebel for a little while when they're young, and then as they age, they become a little bit older and wiser and more experienced, and they start to rely more on those conventional wisdoms. But we live in this different time, where, and this is what makes me really appreciate your website and others like it, is we live in this time where information is coming at us 24-7, and the majority of it is that tidal wave of progressive thought that is constantly eroding away at the conventional wisdoms that have been the bedrock of civilization. We're, we're having those eroded in leaps and bounds now. And thanks to people like you um, who, who are willing to get out and be a voice of common sense, a voice of truth, they're, they're, we're making some headway. Well, you, well, Lee, you mentioned discernment, and that's something that uh, I believe has, has uh, uh, been lost in, in all communities, but perhaps maybe more specifically within the black community. Uh, just being able to discern truth, what is true and what is not. Uh, as you probably know, um, faith is very strong in the black community. Uh, throughout our history, uh, it's been a reliance on God and God's word uh, that helped get blacks through some very difficult and dark times. Oh, yes. Uh, what I find somewhat amazing, and I think I had something up on BQI not too long ago, uh, I think it was had something to do with the gay marriage uh, uh, issue with uh, President Obama. Uh, what amazed me was the fact that <clears throat> I saw that as another issue where it, it was going to be a case where blacks would have to decide if they wanted to live by their faith 
or if they were going to go to a different calling, which would be a political party, a, a political ideology. Uh, because quite frankly, there are many issues that are out here today uh, that fly in the face of what true Christianity is all about. Of conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom. Uh, and I, I, it's very frustrating for me sometimes when I see uh, uh, people of faith, uh, black and white, who put aside their, polit- their faith and, and, and in turn reach for a political ideology. And Yes, and they, get, they go with this... That. They go with they, the situational ethics. Right. They, the, they exchange principle for power. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's very uh, disheartening. Uh, I find it very difficult to understand and comprehend at times. And those are the sort of things that I really uh, wish that blacks begin to, to sit down and, and really think deep and long about their faith. And do they really want to live a life of faith? And if so, it has to be reflected also in everything that they do, not just going to church on Sunday and right. Sunday night, uh, but living that faith. And living that faith, in part, uh, extends to how they uh, look at the political issues and how they vote. And right. Well, and unfortunately, you their know, I, I think I s- doesn't happen. Yeah, you know, I think I saw it on your site. Um, it was a, uh, it was either another blog or it was a video or something like that about how the Democratic Party and socialism. And these these government handouts have managed to do something to the black family that slavery could not do. The fact that they could sell people's children out from under them did not take away the family structure. They they managed to hold together in spite of that, um, and to hold on to to principles to 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 godly principles in spite of that but this this entitlement society mentality this thing this this structure that they've built to provide you with everything from cradle to grave has done the damage to the black community and the black family that slavery could not do and that's astonishing well I, in, in the very first article that I published with Black Quill and Ink uh, the article was entitled from slavery to freedom to slavery and it talks about it talked about how blacks came to america in an enslaved status how they were able to win their freedom uh um, during the uh, civil war and how they in a very different way voluntarily went back into slavery uh through this dependency of government uh and how over time uh so many in the black community have become dependent on government handouts uh, and to some degree, I've come to even understand that that was almost a, a democratic strategy of how to get votes, how to secure a vote base, uh, which was to have a group of people dependent on the government. And quite frankly, if you look at statistics now, it's pretty much proven true. Yes, it certainly has. It really has. And, uh, you know, we were looking at some statistics on a video that we saw on your website earlier um, about some of the things that we've been led to believe as far as how it it goes with Democrats and Republicans, um, there's some lies being spread there, too. You know, we we always hear how the Democrats are, you know, they're on the side of, they pick every group. They, it it, it was, you know, women, homosexuals, they they divide us every way they possibly can. The rich, the poor. That it is it is a constant divide and conquer strategy that's going on with the Democrat Party, but they paint themselves as having always been on the side of minorities of blacks. When the reality is, and this is again thanks to a video that I saw on your website, the reality is that's not true. That's not at all true. You're right. The the Republican Party has a long and rich history of uh, supporting civil rights causes. Abraham Lincoln uh, was a Republican. Um, and over the years, it was the Republican Party, quite frankly, that advocated those policies, federal policies, that uh, were directed towards providing freedom for the slaves and freedom overall to those who previously had been oppressed. It was actually the Democrat Party that uh, oftentimes came out against policies like the Civil Rights Act. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, there was an article, I think, in the New York Times back in uh, the, the, the late 60s that painted a picture of what was called the Southern Strategy. It was a strategy used, supposedly used by Rich, Richard Nixon to win over votes, uh, whereby supposedly racists in the Democrat Party left that party to go to the Republican Party. Well, in fact, that just wasn't the case. 
The uh, only one who left that party to go to the Republican Party was Strom Thurmond. No Strom one else Thurman. left. Correct. That was Strom Thurmond. He left. He went back to Democrat Party, um, and I think he ultimately ended at the Democrat Party. But the fact was that he, the, the simple fact that he went to the Republican Party gave uh, some legitimacy to the position that uh, many more racists from the Democrat Party did the same thing as Strom, when in fact that was not the case. No, that was not the case. He was the only one who did that. Hey, we've got a caller calling in. I'll tell you what, Milton, if I lose you, if I do this right, I'm not going to lose you, but if I do lose you, please call right back. I'm going to answer this call, but hopefully I think I've got it set up so that you are going to be there. Hang on just one second. Okay, and yeah, I think I have you both. Milton, you still there? I'm still here, Luke. Okay, and we have a caller. Yeah, welcome to uh, Faith and Freedom. Hi there. Hi, who are you? My name is Gay. And where are and you I'm, from? Uh, in Anthem, Arizona. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah. Great to have you with us. Thanks. Do you have a question for Milton? I do. Okay, go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask how much time um, the family took together to decide whether or not... Um, the, the tact that Milton is taking uh, would be, you know, detrimental to the family or, or a scary situation. And how, how, you know, was there like a whole bunch of deliberation about, um, you know, how far to go? Because there's threats out there for um, conservative blacks um, and name calling and all kinds of just terrible things. Oh, yes. And I think it took a lot of courage. I agree. I agree. I agree. Milton? Well, uh, hello, Gary. Hey, Milton. Um, uh, thank you, thanks for the question. Uh, I, I am a staunch conservative, and all members of my family know that to be the case. And we have had, unfortunately, some differences of opinion uh, about my political views versus theirs. Uh, but we're family, and we remain together, although it does become strained at times. <laughs> I'll find a way to get over it. But uh, I'm, I'm just so convinced that uh, the conservative principles are the principles that make this great nation and they are the very principles that will see us out of this 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 darkness this dark period if you will that we are we are going through at the moment uh, there have been times uh, when I was somewhat concerned about the safety of my family uh, we actually published a couple of articles that uh, were sort of edgy in some respects uh, but again having a faith that uh, my wife and I both put our faith first uh, we pray about those things, and we felt it was a message that needed to be told, and so we published the article, and uh, we were ready and willing and able to address whatever concerns that might have come about. But thank God nothing happened. <laughs> uh, but uh, there are times when it is somewhat uh, somewhat of a challenge and a little difficult, but we, we feel God has led us to do this, and we are committed to doing it. Awesome. Well, Gay, any other questions? That was it, and just to God bless him and his family. Yes, amen. And thank you for calling in. We'd love to have you back sometime. Milton? Yep. Um, yeah, I think I still have you. I did, I did that right, didn't I? You were perfect with it. Yeah, I didn't lose you. I've got this phone system figured out. Wow, cool. That was the first time I've ever taken a, uh, what, do, what do you call it, uh, where you have uh, two people on the phone at one time. I, I can't, uh, well, I'm drawing a blank. A conference call. Conference, conference call. call. Thank you. Thank you. A conference call. Yeah, I'm getting old. You know, that brought up a question for me, listening to the two of you about that conversation. Do you notice a pushback primarily from younger people? rather than older people does it seem to you that as people age they seem to gain some wisdom about the bedrock ideas and principles and while there may not be a full agreement on the direction that you've taken do your do the things that you believe do those things are they more easily entreated more easily accepted from the older generation than the younger generation my my experience, quite honestly, Lee, has been has been that uh, the the younger generation they tend to be a, a bit more receptive to uh, hearing alternate or alternative viewpoints. Uh, I would attribute that to the fact that they have uh, they've come up in a, a time of uh, technology where change is just in rapid, yeah. uh, and it's something I think they are cool. a lot more comfortable with. Hey, Milton, uh, we're up against yeah. a hard break. We'll, we'll be right back. Hey, stay with us here. More faith and freedom just ahead. Okay.